Aquarius, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you, no particular subject. We're gonna take an issue, something we know, something we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there will be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your 11th house. This could be for you. Thank you, however you support the channel, very much appreciate it. Cross watch is your more than welcome message, may well be for you. All the information is in the description box, including website link for private reads. So, Aquarius, what's going on? One more. What do we got? We have the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups, Venus in Scorpio. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oof, this takes me back a few years. Um, oh God, who sings it? So it was the 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 musician. It was like a techno musician, Robert Miles. He's passed away now. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, and it, it was with a collaboration. The song's called One on One. After all is said and done, one on one, one on one is still is one. Um, ah, okay. So all right. It's like it's like what's set in stone is set in stone, and what I mean, I I, I was about to say what can't be argued. We're, obviously, there's there's people's opinions in any aspect, but there's if you follow the seven hermetic principles, you can't go wrong. You know, it's like one on one, on one is still is one. It's like. Nothing can change, you know, the prince, principle of mentalism, the first one, which is, you know, everything um, is a mental creation in the sense of reality is shaped by the mind and consciousness. Um, principle two, um, correspondence, as above, so below, as within, so without. Three, vibration, principle of vibration, everything is moving constantly. So, um, you know, depending on the on the vibration and the frequency nothing nothing's still everything is in constant motion four is polarity you know everything has its opposites five is um is rhythm ebbs and flows of life up and up and downs six is um uh, like karma cause and effect you know every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause and then hermetic principle is the last one is is gender everything has a masculine and and, and feminine principle to it nail those and everything just aligns it's like one on one still is one interesting what do we know what don't we know recent past oh nice advice <laughs> yeah your life is gonna really transform when you recognize that principle uh, it's just like if 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 that is constant, if if that if those rules are rules, and you live your life based on those choices, everything changes. Outcome fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's breaking free. We've got the seven of cups, and then everything around it is is major arcana. Seven of wands, another seven. Okay. With the King of Swords, Page of Swords, the Hermit, the Three of Cups, Nice of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, Ace of Cups, Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Queen of Cups. So the Seven of Cups, what we're aware of is the Empress. The Empress is the energy of abundance. The Empress is um, the feminine polarity. It is to receive. How do we receive? We receive by trusting. What we're not aware of is Temperance. Temperance is a card of alchemy. Temperance is this is the hermetic principles. This is um, the law. This is universal law. This is the principles of live your life both by those rules and everything must align. Recent past is the Hierophant. The Hierophant is here representing Shiva. Shiva has a message straight from the book. The God of Destruction. This is in your past, so things have changed. God of destruction and rebirth. You are truly on a yogic path. Shiva is referred to as Adi Yogi, the first yogi ever. 
He attained enlightenment and abandoned himself in an ecstatic dance atop the Himalayas. When his ecstasy went beyond movement, he became utterly still. People could not understand his switch between ecstatic movement and stillness and thought him mad. However, seven students, seven, there you go, wanted to learn how he was moving past physical limit limitations. This is how he began teaching yoga. Shiva planted the seed of yoga into the human mind. Pulling Shiva represents moving past the limitations from your society, body, mind or ego. It represents doing the inner work to evolve. It is also a call to service to teach others your wisdom so that they too can become liberated. Reversed. When you change your habits, uh, when you change your ways and adopt habits, hobbies and lifestyle choices that are unfamiliar to those around you, they will call you mad. However, you are opening up the door for a new way of being. Do not let the words of others hold you down. Rather, use them as a reminder that you are on the right path, shifting consciousness. When Shiva began practicing sadhana, people could not understand his ways, yet they created the basis of what we know as yoga. Never doubt your significance and the way your authenticity can impact others. And I kind of feel like this is what's happening here. Because if we look at this in a different aspect, we have Shiva. Then we have the Empress, which is the feminine. So the, his feminine consort is Parvati. Parvati speaks, she's a wonderful energy that represents becoming your highest self. As soon as I find her. There she is. Goddess of devotion, love and yoga, you pull upon Parvati when you take an immense action towards becoming your highest self. In Hindu mythology, Parvati was in love with unattainable Shiva in the recent past. Who, who, was, who was deep in the mountains practicing yoga and detached from the material world. She knew he needed the feminine to bring him down to the earth, but he was totally inaccessible. Instead of begging and pleading, Parvati decided to become her highest self and seek enlightenment through yoga. Her family objected, saying women cannot become yogis. But she headed to the mountains anyway, where she stood in a frigid stream, balancing on one leg for uncountable months or years. Eventually, Shiva felt her immense energy and fell in love with her because of her strength and determination. Pavati represents commitment to practice, unbreakable willpower and the power of self-transformation. Continue your journey toward enlightenment. Now that's what's taking place here. It's like the masculine aspect of yourself meets the feminine aspect of yourself. It becomes that inner union, that sacred marriage, Mary Magdalene type of energy. Um, and then we bring that together we harmonize the masculine and feminine principles with this temperance card. Your advice then is the high priestess. Anytime I see the high priestess next to the seven of cups, she is clearing a path, a path for a brand new beginning. And your outcome is the fool. How incredible is this reading? This is recognizing the seven principles, living by the seven principles, choosing, um, choosing this significant kind of, I know what I can control in my life, I know what I can't control in my life. So the control aspects we can let go of and we just deal with the internal, which is what you can control. So get in the body, get in the heart space, really open it up because like I said, the high priestess is here and she's like, you've you've done the work, you've, you've, you've looked towards the top of the mountains, your, the feminine aspect now is magnetically drawing. This could be a person as well. You know, you could be the energy of Shiva or Parvati, that type of thing, or vice versa. Whatever's going on here, providing you follow these paths, these, these principles, these hermetic principles. And it doesn't have to be the hermetic principles. You could look at the seven chakras. You could look at the, um, you know, the seven planets, the colours, days of the week, whatever it is. You know, mastering those aspects of yourself. For instance, you know, Tuesday is ruled by Mars. So Tuesday, let's say I'm going to go to the gym and work out till I pass out. You know, it's that type of thing. It's like really finding something what works for you based on the seven principles. This could be just looking up universal laws. Very, very similar. But yeah, fantastic. Um, there's also something standing out here. Um, it, there's two aspects. I'm getting... Five of 72, uh, but I'm also getting nine of 72. The reason why I'm getting nine is because the Hierophant is represented by number nine. It's Angel Hatzil in the 72 Angels of Gabala. So I just want to see what five and nine are representing. So Hatzil is number nine. 
Ah, perfect. Love is stronger than anything. Hatziel is the angel of universal love who allows us to truly love, to transform all forms of negativity with kindness and goodness. It teaches us that love, love is stronger than anything. So that's number nine. And number five is Mahasaya, rectification. Prevention is better than cure. The angel of rectification of errors helps to rectify what grows crooked before its materialization, help, helping us to understand that life is a real school. Fantastic. I just want to quickly check out where death is, purely because we've got the Seven of Cups being Venus in Scorpio, and we've got Venus here with the Empress and the Hierophant, really, both um, energies of Venus. Um, and obviously, Pluto has moved back into your 12th house, doing those last little nuts and crannies in that uh, subconscious mind of yours before he moves into your first house. Do not panic if you know a Capricorn and they tell, tell you the last 15 years have been torturous. The energy of Pluto and Aquarius is going to be very, very different. Still transformational, but very, very different. Death, where are you? Look at that. You guys, literally, you guys are the star card and you're with the moon and you're with the world. Look at the yin and the yang. There's that. It's, it's the principles. Really dive it into your subconscious here. Wonderful energy. And death is with the four of swords and the chariot. Okay, uh, some of you need to watch the um, reading that I did last week about um, just it was just a, a collective reading. It was titled Le Goose. Le Goose is the the rune of emotion. And it was like something that was cold and silent. You know, ice turns to emotion. So there's something about that reading to maybe. I don't know, appease somebody's anxious mind, maybe. But yeah, death, death is bringing you success. Freya is, is leading the way here, and we've got Kalimar. So death and rebirth, finding your path, and another seven. And number seven again. Aquarius, I, this is very exciting. I love this reading. I think it's amazing. I think a path is being well and truly cleared for you, providing you recognise those, uh, those laws, um, and and take action on your life based on those laws. When you break it down, it's pretty simple. <laughs> okay, guys, in your extended, we're going to clarify these and see what this brand new beginning comes. It's, it looks amazing. Venus in Scorpio, Taurus, Libra, Sagittarius, Taurus, Cancer, Pisces, Aquarius and Gemini, Mars in L Leo, Virgo, Mercury in Cancer, Sagittarius, Sun in Gemini, Moon in Aquarius, Pisces, Sun in Gemini, Mercury in Aquarius. Cups, Wands, Swords, Pentacles, everyone's here. Those are your standouts. Let me know. Take care. See you soon. Bye.